Hey guys, it's Tomatoda. Today's tutorial is how to use your clay pieces to cast them into silicone molds to then turn them into resin pieces. Now for the resin, you can use epoxy resin, but today I will be using UV resin because this video is kindly sponsored by Mr. Resin. Now let me do a quick shout out. I have been eyeing their UV resin for a while because Peach Fetty raved about them to me like multiple times before, but I have been betrayed in the past by many different resin brands. So I kind of have trust issues in this department, which is why I did don't want to switch from my current brand but Mr. Resin reached out to me recently and offered to send me a gigantic ass bottle of their UV resin for me to try in return for video content so I said hell yeah and you know what I freaking loved it if you follow me on Instagram you might have seen me test the resin with my new keycap molds and that bitch was so fucking crystal clear even when I left it in my UV lamp for like 15 minutes no yellowing Biggest bonus was the price. Compared to the UV resin I was using before, Mr. Resin was so much cheaper for the same amount and it came with silicone tools. Not saying the previous brand I used was bad or anything, I also loved it, you know, no slander here. Just saying that Mr. Resin had a lot more pros. So I'm actually going to be switching over. Whether or not Mr. Resin decides to sponsor me again when I run out, like I don't care because they've convinced me. Also, as soon as they posted this on their Instagram, I immediately went ahead and bought their UV pigments on Amazon too. Yes, I finally caved in and bought UV resin pigments because I needed yellow to work for me for a pigment video that I have in mind and I mean the price point was also very good. So if you want to see all of this in action or a mini review of the pigments, keep watching and thanks again Mr. Resin for the free resin. Now to begin the actual craft. I'm going to be using scrap polymer clay to make my model. As you saw earlier, the topic is squeakoids. So here I am just shaping the shit into a squeakoid. Occasionally using liquid clay to adhere the pieces. Also, I'm not actually smoothing out any of the attachments cause the resin coating at the end will kind of cover over like shallow or creases, but it's all up to the artist and their preference. There are a few things that you do have to keep in mind while making your model though. One is that pieces that stick out kind of aggressively might cause more difficulty when casting the resin due to trapped air bubbles. This squeakoid has like seven things that are like major sticking out of its body. So I will be suffering later in this video. Also, you have to think about the function of your model. Like for instance, if this was going to be a charm, would it be better for me to make a hole straight down? Could that interfere with the specific design that I'm thinking of? Or would it be better if I just pierced it on the hair? But if you do go for something like the piercing method, I recommend you to drill a hole after the resin casting because donut like shapes would just get stuck into the mold if that makes sense. For me, I'm going to do neither because it's not going to be a charm for once. What do you think it's going to be? It's going to be a keycap. Of course. For the facial details or any details that I know I'm going to paint on, what I like to do is make indentations. That way I can just shove pigment in there and then wipe off the excess on the surface. You'll see an example later in the video. Another thing you have to keep in mind is that the bottom of your model or at least one side of your model should be flat and not too narrow or else you're gonna have a difficult time popping it out of the mold in the future. Now bake your clay pieces in the oven for the full time required. After it has been baked, you can smooth it or clean it up lightly with acetone on a cotton swab. The silicone mold pretty much captures every texture and detail, so if you use clay as your model, your resin will have the same texture as the clay, which it's gonna end up looking matted or frosted. So towards the end of the craft, I like to brush on coats of UV resin to get it look shiny and smooth again. Now you need an appropriate sized plastic or metal containment. You can see I'm making my own with a plastic cup. You can also use cookie cutters. For the sticky bottom layer, I'm going to use clear packaging tape, 
When it's not wide enough for certain projects, I'll overlap the two edges of the tape, making it into like one big sheet. But for this project, one strip is good enough and I'm going to attach my squeak wave model in the center, making sure that the bottom is very flush to the tape. Then I'm going to put the containment around and using a hot glue gun, I'm going to seal off the edges to prevent the silicone mixtures from leaking through. Now, preparing the silicone mix. The brand I'm using is called Dragon Skin 20. It requires 50% part A and 50% part B, so two equal parts. I usually like to use one of those plastic measuring cups, but unfortunately I don't have any at the moment, so I resorted to using a scale to measure equal parts. The reason why I like to use Dragon Skin 20 is because it cures as a transparent mold. This is going to be very important if you're going to be using UV resin since the UV light has to penetrate through. And because I had to use two separate cups to measure, I'm pouring the solution back and forth just to make sure everything gets mixed thoroughly. Don't forget to scrape the sides of the cup and the stick as well. This clip is called Two Cups, One Girl. After making sure my silicone mold is mixed very well, I'm going to slowly pour it into the containment. Go slow because you want the mold to flow into all the crevices. You don't want any bubbles to be trapped. This mold solution is nice because like 90% of the bubbles don't really affect the mold, but there is like that 10% of unluckiness where it does affect the mold. If you can catch it during the pour, you can try and remove the bubbles with a toothpick or something. Now that the pour is finished, I'm gonna let it sit for about 4 to 8 hours to cure. If I have a lot of leftover silicone, I like to spread it on my table so that later I can use it to rest my UV resin tools cause that shit gyps around everywhere, you know? When the silicone is cured, it peels off very easily. Now I'm going to remove everything and demold my model. You are now witnessing how squeakoids are born into this world. Does that make my mold a vagina? Anyways, as you can see, some of the clay pieces fell off and got stuck inside, but it's okay because I'm going to use my tweezers to get them out, and I can use liquid clay to glue them back on if I want to recast another mold. Then I'm going to clean up my mold by trimming off some of the excess, and it's done. Also, um, originally, I was going to give you guys a big, big warning here, which was that I do not recommend casting specifically UV resin pieces with the silicone mold because it just doesn't react very well and it stays tacky. I've also talked to other people who have had the same issue too, so I thought it was just all UV resin. Keep in mind, epoxy resin doesn't have this problem, but I thought all UV resin had this problem, which is why I wanted to capture it on camera as an example to show you guys, but that did not happen with my Mr. Resin UV Resin. The mold actually cured perfectly fine. I was so shocked because like now this is a game changer for me. If I can cast UV resin pieces, that means I can use a handful of resin castings to make more molds rather than hand making each model with clay. I will try it out in a future video. Moving along, it's time to pour some resin inside. First, I'm going to do a clear casting just to check the shape of the mold. And yeah, it was pretty difficult. I had to poke it around with tools to get all the cavities filled. But after the casting, it looked really good for the most part, except here, I found that there was unfortunately a bubble in the mold, that 10% I was talking about earlier. But eh, not too much to worry about because I was able to actually just remove it with a knife. Now, I'm going to pour in some colored resin. I pulled out my new box of Mr. Resin pigments and found out that there's actually no white in the 12 pack. But it's okay, cause I'll use white alcohol ink, which is one of the few opaque-ish alcohol ink colors that doesn't give me a lot of trouble with UV resin curing. Fill up the mold and then cure it in the UV lamp. When you pop out your resin piece and it seems cured on the outside but the inside is still squishy or like not cured, you want to put the piece back into the lamp without the mold for another 2-3 to three minutes. 
Sometimes the mold layer can interfere with the UV light penetrating all the way through to the center. It's not a completely clear mold like this one is, you know? But if it doesn't harden even after the second cure without the mold, you are simply just fucked. Like don't mess with that shit cause it could actually leak out eventually. Moving on to the Mr. Resin pigments. This one is called Blueberry, and when I unscrewed the top, I realized you had to poke a hole through it first, and it says on the box to mix one drop at a time, which I did, and in total, I added two drops, which actually made the perfect color that I was looking for. But before I actually put it into my mold, I decided to do a sample test just to make sure that it can actually cure all the way, and it did. Beautiful color, perfect curing. So I'm going to go ahead and pour it into my mold, cure it in my lamp, and pump that baby out. Next color is this one called Thai Tea. How freaking cute is that name? I also did two drops, and the results were just as how I had imagined it to be. This is perfect. For the pink, the dragon fruit here looked too bright and the strawberry was more reddish, so I was debating which one to use, but I decided to go with strawberry, hoping that if it was a bit diluted, it'll look more pink. And yeah, I added two drops, worked out great. Next, we have lemon. So I always have bad luck with the color yellow, and this was no exception. I'm gonna be straight up with you guys, it was disappointing. I ended up mixing actually four drops, and it still wasn't the color I was going for. I wanted a nice sunshine yellow type of color, but this was not it. In their defense though, it certainly is the color of like raw squeezed lemon juice, but it's not what I wanted or expected. So then and there, I decided to test out all of the colors in case there was another disappointing one. I only mixed one drop of pigment into a key cap mold full of UV resin, cured it for 4 minutes in my UV lamp, and here are the results. Out of the 12 pigments in the box, I was absolutely happy with 10 of them. They mixed really well, they were opaque, they were beautiful, however 2 of them, it was kind of like eh. The obvious one being yellow because it was not opaque at all and it's just not what you see on the bottle. The second color was mint chip because it was just too similar to pistachio except it was slightly less opaque than pistachio. And also keep in mind that this keycap is a thick block of resin, so if you do spread it out thinner, the colors are a little bit less opaque. After the squeakoid bases were all casted, I used Posca paint pens to color in the indented details. As I mentioned before, the indented details are going to make the coloring easier because if I go out of line, I can just take some acetone and wipe off the mistakes on the surface while actually leaving the desired pigments inside the grooves. Just make sure the paint is dry before you do the wiping part. And for the hair, I used Posca paint pens and acrylic paint. Technically, I think Posca paint pens are acrylic paints, but either way, the paint pens make the coloring process just easier and faster, which is why they are my preferred medium. But the color range is limited, so for the colors that I do not have, I used classic acrylic paint. Once everything is dry, it's time to coat all of that shit in UV resin. I like to do two thin coats of UV resin using a flat brush, of course curing it in the lamp in between each layer. I was incredibly surprised and pleased at how easily Mr. Resin allowed me to do two very very thin coats without it being streaky or bubbly. Because that way, I can keep the details that I want like the squeakoid's mouth while still covering up the details I don't want like texture. This is after it is fully cured with two coats. Look at how smooth and shiny this looks, and just look at how the mouth isn't blended into the body like a protruding blob. It actually has definition still. Here are all the squeakoids done, and look at all of the different colors. It is time to party! Let's go eat some hard days! 
Anyways, that is it. My apologies for picking such a difficult shape for this tutorial. In the future, I'll have more videos that go through the similar process where I utilize easier shapes. But I hope that this can help you guys make your own molds and your own creations. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.